Over 71 railway stations have been closed across Melbourne in 165 years, and many of them once lay on the Werribee line. From Paisley to Werribee Racecourse, let's explore the demolished, planned and abandoned stations that form an integral part of Melbourne's rail history. To start off, let's head to Hatherley, a hidden story of the Werribee line. Tenders of a station building, station and platform began in February of 1890 and the station opened on February the 14th in 1890. It is located near the Altona Loop Junction at the intersection of Ross Road and Mill Street and just north of the Mobile Oil Refinery. A miracle story is most notable from the station. The Sensational Leap was a story of an 11 year old girl who missed her stop at Haverley and decided to jump off the train going at 48 kilometres per hour. Incredibly, she didn't receive a single scratch and her appearance at home was quite incredible. There's obviously no remnants of the station today. It was only closed 123 years ago. Next up, let's head down the Altona Loop to our next station at Mobile Town. Mobile Town Railway Station opened on the 9th of November in 1953 as standard oil platform and it was built to serve the Vacuum Oil Company as well as the Brown Transworld Construction Company with trains stopping at the station when needed. It was renamed to Mobile Town on the 1st of June in 1954 after the Vacuum Oil Company adopted Mobile as their trading name. It was not until September the 7th in 1958 that it was made a public platform, after which most trains were timetabled to stop there. When the Altona line was extended to West Ona on 18th of January in 1985, the station was closed and today there is no physical evidence of the station's existence. Only 400 metres down the track, we have Williamstown Racecourse Station. Let's head there right now. The first Williamstown Racecourse station was located on the main Melbourne to Geelong Railway, near the site of Haverley Station. It was in use from December 26th in 1860, but it was closed when the new station here was built on the 26th of April in 1885, much closer to the racecourse. The station itself was provided with an island platform and many sidings to the east and west. Overhead wiring was provided on August the 27th in 1920 when the line was electrified However, unfortunately, 25 years later, the station and racecourse were closed after World War II. In May of 1950, the overhead wiring equipment, equipment was removed and up until 2018, some of the electric wiring based stanchions were still around. However, they too were demolished in 2018 when the Coral Wright level crossing was removed just up there. It's great to see a lot of the area has been turned back into parklands and a nice garden. And now let's learn more about the Altona line and head to Altona Beach. Altona Beach station opened on November the 9th in 1888 and was the original terminus of the Altona line. The line to Altona was constructed privately by the Altona Bay Co in 1888 and the first official trains ran to the land sale on the 8th of September in the same year. The lack of patronage and poor property sales meant that passenger services were ceased in 1890. In 1895, a mine was built just past Altona Beach Station, where West Tona is today. And that mine used the line from 1895 to 1896 to haul the coal. After this, however, up until 1908, the line fell into disuse until the Melbourne and Altona Collier began operation. A spur line was constructed for the mine in 1909 and in 1916, army personnel used the line to get to their camps at Altona. And in 1917, steam passenger services were restored to Altona. However, Altona Beach Station, where we are now, was closed on the 17th of November. The station was located west of Grief Parade, and today, just like many closed stations on the line, there's nothing left of it. Next up, let's head to Paisley. Fast. Taisley Station opened on the 14th of October in 1929 and despite it being a public station, helped serve the many refineries in the area. 
1967, the Werribee line was duplicated and the station was rebuilt to become an island platform. Miller Road level crossing was removed in 1973 to form an overpass and the pedestrian subway was constructed. The Werribee line was electrified in 1983 and for two years these services ran via Paisley. However, in 1985, trains ran via the Altona Loop, bypassing Paisley, and this led to its closure on the 14th of April in 1985. The pedestrian subway was filled in, and the station buildings demolished, and today, an overgrown platform still exists. Now, let's head one stop down the line to Galvin. Galvin Station opened on the 27th of August in 1927 and was named after Michael Galvin, the Shire President of Werribee at the time. Just like Paisley, it served the industrial area and its workers and became an island platform in 1967 after the duplication of the Werribee line. The station closed with Paisley on the 14th of April in 1985 after most trains were diverted through the Altona Loop. Today, there isn't a platform like Paisley, however, the track slough shows where it would have been before demolition, and today, trains run past it at over 130 kilometres an hour. Plans for a station called Edinburgh were very close to becoming a reality when the Altona Line was extended to Laverton in 1985. The formation and bridge work for the station was prepared, but its downfall was most likely due to how close it was to Laverton, and it was never built. Finally, let's head to our final station at Werribee Racecourse. Werribee Racecourse Station opened in 1884 to serve the adjacent Werribee Racecourse. When the Werribee line was electrified, Werribee Racecourse was originally a part of that system. However, the overhead stations were never connected and the station has unofficially been closed since 1995. When the standard gauge line west of the station was built, it made access to the station impossible. Today, the station platform is still there, although it hasn't been used for 25 years. But who knows, it may be used again in the future. And that's it, all the ghost stations of the Werribee line. Time for the outro. Thank you guys for watching another video. Like and subscribe if you did enjoy, and as always, let me know down below of any video suggestions or feedback. This has been The Tray Man, and until next time, goodbye.